My name is Robert Pedales. I'm the Associate Pastor at First United Methodist Church in McAllen, Texas. I was so excited and honored at the idea and the invitation to be a part of this workshop today. Unfortunately, I have other obligations here at Annual Conference at this time, and I am unable to be there with you all in person. However, the group and I decided it would be a good idea to go ahead and shoot a quick video and share just a little bit about some of what I have to offer during this workshop. The first thing I want to talk about is the, the history of Wesleyan small groups, Wesleyan class meetings. Uh, this is something that I really only started learning about when I was an undergraduate, and I just became so enamored by this that I, I really develop, developed a deep passion for Wesleyan discipleship and the history that happened behind it. So let me share some of that with you. Um, back in the 1800s, John Wesley was still alive. And one of the first things he did is he was a professor of Greek, biblical Greek, at Oxford. While he was a professor there, he was approached by a group of students, one of whom was his younger brother, Charles. And they told him that they were very interested in the idea of meeting together on a regular basis to help grow and nurture their faith and have greater fruitfulness in their ministries. And so John decided to accept this invitation to be a part of this and to really help lead the group. And so they did. They began re meeting on a regular basis. And as part of that, they agreed on some pretty basic ideas of what it meant to be a Christian, you know, making sure they visited the sick, making sure they were spending time in prayer, spending time in worship, taking the Eucharist, a variety of other pieces that made up something of a covenant for their group, if you will. And this really served as the bedrock for what would become the Methodist movement, both in Europe and later in the Americas. So what wound up happening was as Methodism began to spread later on in John Wesley's life following the Aldergate experience and his time in the Americas, is that people began to realize that it, it was not enough just to go to worship. It was not enough just to be in scriptures. It was not enough just to be in prayer. We needed a place and a group of people where we could talk about these experiences and we could hold one another accountable to growth in the Christian life. And so began the class meetings. And the class meetings have, since the very beginning of the spread of Methodism, been the bread and butter of what made this idea in Christianity flourish as it did. Here's how it worked. As different Methodist preachers would go around the area, people would begin to get excited about God. But the Methodists were not really their own church. They were a revival movement within the Church of England. And so what the Methodist preachers would do is tell them, you need to go to your local parish. You need to go to your local Church of England. That's where you will have worship. That's where you will take the Eucharist. But as part of being a Methodist, part of this group, this revival within the Church of England, it means meeting together on a regular basis. And the main question that these group of people would answer every time they got together, generally once a week, was the question, how is it with your soul? And what served as the guiding principle behind how they would answer that question were John Wesley's general rules. The first of which is, do no harm. The second, to do good. And the third, is to attend upon the ordinances of God. And so these groups of men and women, typically numbering eight to 12, would get together generally on a weekly basis and answer these questions. They would talk about how God was at work in their lives through worship, through reading the scriptures, how God was at work and how they were trying their best to resist temptation and flee from sin, and how God was at work and how they did good, how they would go and be in ministry with the needy, how they would go and visit hospitals, visit prisons, when they would be in ministry with the people that God called them to be in ministry with. These class meetings, now better known as small groups, they allowed people to really engage with their faith and grow in a meaningful, transformative way. What we're talking about today is nothing new. Not at all. It's not groundbreaking. It's not innovative. It's old, and it's rich with heritage 
and it's so overflowing with the abundant fruit it has produced over the last couple of centuries. It is a joy to be able to be with you all, at least in video form today, and I look forward to hopefully running into some of you during the rest of annual conference and hearing how things went with my group when I meet with them later today. Thank you so much for your interest in this. I look forward to seeing more and more United Methodist churches in our conference latch on to what really makes us distinct, this idea of pursuing hearts that are transformed by the grace of God and making sure that we are doing this by meeting with each other and asking each other these tough questions. Thank you so much, and God bless you.